G'day, welcome to Partakers and our session talking about who is God. I've had people say to me, I believe in God's existence but I don't need to study or read the Bible to know him. What they forget is that belief in God's existence is not enough. Even Satan and his demons believe in God's existence. It is only through the Bible we can study God and his relationship with the universe. All we can know about God is not contained in the Bible, but the Bible does contain all we can know about God during our earthly life. That is because God is infinite and beyond our limitations of space and time. Yet the God we as Christian disciples follow and worship is knowable through the Bible. This means that God is a personal God and not some remote being. That is a key to studying Him. He wants to be known and has given us the Bible in order for us to do so. So how can we know about this God? In the Bible, what we know of God are the fundamental qualities or powers of his being. The Bible elucidates statements about God, by God, through which we try and understand God using our finite minds. The Bible reveals God to us. God is spirit, yet also a personal and infinite being. He is one in substance, nature and being, and incapable of division. And yet he is three co-equal people, or the Trinity. It is through the Bible we discover what pleases, angers, offends, gives him joy. The words revealed in the Bible describe his attributes. The fact that we are able to take hold and understand this about an infinite God is evidence that God desires to be known by humans. So, what are some of the attributes of God? There are two different kinds of attributes, natural and moral. Firstly, his natural attributes. He's transcendent. God's self-existence apart from and independent of creation. This reflects God's majesty and greatness. Romans 11 verse 33, 1 Chronicles 29 verse 11, and 1 Kings 8 verse 27. Then God is imminent or omnipresent. God is wholly present everywhere. God fills the universe in all its parts without division. Psalm 139 verse 7 to 12 and Jeremiah 23 verse 23 to 24. And God is omnipotent. God has power to do all things that are the object of power. With God all things are possible, Luke 1 verse 37. He is El Shaddai or God Almighty, Jeremiah 32 verse 17 to 18. Nothing is too difficult for him. And he's omniscient. God has perfect knowledge of all things, actual, past, present, future, and possible. 1 John 3, verse 20, God knows all things. Psalm 47, verse 5, infinite understanding. And fifthly, God is infinite. God has no limits. He has an internal and qualitative absence of limitation. It's boundless activity, Romans 11, verse 33 1 Timothy 1 verse 16 and Psalm 147 verse 5. And he's immutable. God does not change. He is unchangeable. Malachi 3 verse 6. I am the Lord and I change not. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And God is eternal. God is without beginning or end. He is the Alpha and Omega. God is outside of time. Time is in God, and He is free from the succession of time. God lives in the eternal present, past, present, and future, and now for God. He is the I Am, Yahweh, Exodus 3, verse 14. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. 1 Timothy 1, verse 17, and Psalm 102, verse 7. And finally, God is Spirit. He is a free personal spirit. Spirit, God is not material. 
He is invisible and indestructible. John 4 verse 24, 1 Timothy 1 17, and 1 Timothy 6 verse 15 to 16. And God is life, John 14 verse 6. And he's energy and activity. And God is a per- has a personality. He has self-consciousness and he is communicative. And then there are his moral attributes. He is goodness, absolute perfection, seeking creation's welfare. God is love, 1 John 4, verse 8 to 10. God communicates and gives of himself. God is grace. God gives us what we do not deserve. God's riches at Christ's expense. Ephesians 2, verse 7. It's the unmerited goodness of God, John 1, verse 16. And mercy. God does not give us what we deserve. The goodness of God to those in distress of tenderness and compassion, Ephesians 2, verse 3 to 5. And he is patient or long-suffering. God is slow to anger and he longs to forgive, Exodus 34, verse 6 to 7. And God is truth, John 14, verse 6. The revelation, source and foundation of all truth is God. And God has holiness, moral excellence and perfection of and is God. Total separation from sin and evil. What God is, is holiness. Hebrews 7 verse 26. Be holy, for I am holy. And then his righteousness. God's holiness in action. God's actions conform to his holiness. Justice deals with the absence of righteousness. Sin must be dealt with. Genesis 18 verse 25 and Psalm 89 verse 14. Why do we study this God? There are at least four reasons. 1. It avoids confusion. As we study God we come to know truths about him and we are able to discern what are true and false. Truth combats error. Satan, the evil one, distorts scripture to put people off the truth. 2. Truth develops character. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 to 9. The strongest Christian disciples are those with a good growing knowledge of biblical truth. And since study increases our knowledge of God, it also increases the possibilities to love, to grow and serve as a Christian disciple. And we study it not for its own sake, but to put it into practice. What we believe about God should affect our behaviour. James 1 verse 22 says, We must be doers of the word, not just hearers of this, in order to be effective. Then thirdly, we are commanded to grow in our knowledge of God. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2 to 4. And then fourthly, this God is to be worshipped. And part of our service and submission to this God is that worship is given to him alone. As humans, we are created in his image. And as Christian disciples, we were bought at a price when Jesus died on the cross and we accepted him as our Lord and as Saviour. Jesus Christ is due our worship and reverence. And now a time to delve a bit deeper. Please do read the following passage. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 to 9. Ask yourself the following questions, writing them down if you can, and see how you respond or react to them. Then, why not share your answers with your spouse or a close friend so that you can pray over any issues together? Question 1. From my knowledge of God, what do I find comforting? Question 2. From my knowledge of God, what do I find disturbing? And question three, how has my knowledge of God grown and affected my behaviour since I became a Christian disciple?
Thank you. See you next time on Partakers.